it's also your business. Okay. Hi, my name is Savannah Tuck, and I'm here to talk to you today about sanity check. Everybody has problems. The question is, how do you cope? For most people, that means confiding in a spouse, a friend, or a community leader. However, what if the problem is within the support system? Or the support system is currently unavailable, either emotionally or physically? Who do you share your concerns with then? Less, uh, less appropriate places end up being with coworkers, uh, less trust trustworthy friends, and on Facebook. Sanity Check was created to redirect this TMI, too much information, into a less public outlet. The current facilities today do not satisfy the simple need for mentally healthy individuals to vet their daily frustrations. The purpose of Sanity Check is to listen to problems without creating a bias, without being judgmental, and without becoming personally involved. Sanity Check's target market is women ages 25 to 45. These are working professionals or stay-at-home moms whose annual income is about $40,000 a year. These ladies can be single or married, but they typically will have no kids to maybe one, one child. They fill their schedule with work obligations, family obligations, or volunteer obligations, such as volunteering with church or PTA or uh, just volunteer positions. These women do not have time or cannot sync their crazy calendars with their girlfriend's crazy calendars to have a girls' night or to share concerns. Sanity Check allows this target market to schedule or to just simply walk in and have a session. The hourly rate is approximately $45, and it can be broken down to the minute if our clientele decides not to stay the full hour or if they just, uh, they're busy and they have to go. If this target group used Sanity Check one day a week, it would account for less than 5% of their weekly paycheck. So we're trying to not price ourselves out of the, this provider service. Sanity Check's listeners would be paid $13 to $20 per hour. This would depend highly on their qualifications and their skills. These listeners would be coached in listening techniques and would be encouraged to help the clients further communicate their issues by asking simple questions. Uh, questions off the top of my head, how did that make you feel? Where were you when this occurred? How do you think the other person felt? How did you feel? Sanity Check would be available in person, over the phone, or through instant message. This is to help meet our clientele's very busy schedule. If a client session crosses into the line of professional health services, such as grief counseling, marriage counseling, uh, or uh, other mental health services, the listener needs to attempt to either redirect the session or to simply stop the session. Listeners will be able to provide approved mental health uh, information to further coach these individuals to seek the services they need. There are mentally unhealthy individuals in our society who would greatly benefit from certified psychologists, therapists, and counselors. Sanity Check is kind of the pre-counseling session for those who just need really an ear to listen to and not full-blown on therapy. Sanity Check can only see individuals over the age of 18 on a one-on-one -on -one basis. No families, no uh, spouses. In general, Sanity Check allows an individual to take the problem out of their head and gain perspective through talking it out with someone who does not have a bias. My advertising strategies would basically start at the source. So the less appropriate places where the TMI occurs. We would advertise on Facebook. We would actually also advertise on career websites such as Monster and uh, Career Builder. It might seem like an unlikely source. However, if a person's cruising this, these websites during work, well, maybe they'd like to talk about something. Also, uh, we would see, see probably the, the best TMI place at all uh, we would advertise at bars. Uh, a lot of people like to go uh, have some therapy at 5 o'clock or maybe earlier. So we would try and take those individuals and provide them again a less public outlet. I have estimated that I would need about $60,000 to get this business off the ground. 
I've estimated my monthly expenses to be around $3,600. That includes rent at a very lovely facility off of 87th Street and 69 Highway. Utilities of electric, phone, water, and gas of $350 a month. And one employee starting at $13 per hour working 40 hours a week. I would be open to seeking a partner to help me get this business off the ground, which would reduce my monthly expenses. I've estimated that if I can see four clients per day, five days a week, I would end up breaking even for my monthly costs. So again, the financial cushion of $22,000 would cover just rent and startup expenses the remainder of the $60,000 would go towards my advertising costs. It would go through first furnishing my building that I am printing, and it would go through any additional hiring costs or unforeseen startup costs that I might experience. Does anyone have any questions? the break even? You... The break even, I'd see four clients per day, five days a week, that would get at $45 an hour, um, that would get about $3,600. That is break even, covering my bare expenses of that employee at $13 per hour, utilities, rent. At this point, I'm still starving. But, <laughs> aside from that point. So, but that's you on top of the employee, so you could be that employee and not charge that break. Right, but this is where I, to break even, I would have to see four clients per day. So that is four hours of my day where I would have to be working, <coughs> not drumming up additional business okay. without pounding the pavement, without tracking down leads. Could you do both? I could do both, which is why I would really seek a partner to help kind of manage, okay, if you could be available for these sessions, I'll continue to advertise to drum up business. If we're going to be the full service provider to be available for instant message and phone and walk-in, I feel like to take the volume of clients I would need to create a profit with this business, I'd have to have additional support. Do you know when you would need to start seeing clients? Pretty much, I would pretty much need to start seeing clients immediately. So that's your startup cost of $60,000 plus of course a zero client Oh, right, right. No, no, no. I've, I've, I've given myself a six-month runway. I'm sorry, okay. I understand. Okay. Maybe six-month runway. I've estimated my first month, I would only see one client a day, five days a week, and I would make, for my first month, $900. So I would be definitely in the hole. My runway, though, is I basically said, okay, if I can do one client a day for five days, <coughs> next month I need to be doing two clients per day for five days. And I've escalated it up. So I actually break even month four, but I'm assuming that it's not going to be perfect, so I've given myself the six month runway. Um, why have we lost half of the market by only targeting women? Is there a stigma for men to no, talk about? No, it's about? definitely not a stigma. However, my advertising campaign won't necessarily be, um, it won't be girls. I'm, uh, let me say that. It's, it won't be directly, um, I'll be targeting women because they are more apt to share their feelings, to want to talk about their problems. Um, if something is going on in the home with their husband, they'll be more likely to reach out and, or their, their kids and, and just want to share that information. So definitely we would not limit any services to men. Um, just in the places we're advertising, we're not trying to close anyone out on the market, advertising on Facebook, the job boards, <coughs> Facebook. Um, we want to be all encompassing. We're just expecting that women would be more, <coughs> more vocal and would be more of our regular recurring customers. How did you get to this demo of a 40000 a year household income and then trade that against that weekly paycheck and that $45 an hour? What is an average therapy session run versus that forty-five? Yeah. Which, which makes them say, well, instead of paying for therapy, I'm going to pay for this. Well, the average therapy session, and this is where it gets pretty complicated, because if you are going to go seek therapy, it, you have to do it through your insurance carrier. So you can go to a therapist without insurance, and that makes it incredibly expensive. You're looking at $150 and above 
to go to a counseling, a therapist, any kind of psychologist, at least 150 and above. If you go through insurance, that claim is then sent to your company. So for some people in certain positions, that insurance company files a claim with your employer, that then goes on your permanent record. So while the cost might be cheaper, around $100 an hour, you then put a mark on your employee file. So it, in certain positions like a FBI or some more of the security clearance type jobs, that can be extremely detrimental to your, uh, I guess, in, uh, enhancement in the company. Um, what do you think is the consumer change in behavior that you have to see in order to get people to accept this? Because I'm hearing it, I think it's, I think it's a decent idea, and I think some of your advertising avenues are, are interesting. What is that change? What is the argument you're going to make and say, well, you know, you could just lie to your friends, but I'm going to now pay somebody. What's, what's, the, what's the cost benefit for that? The reason why you would want to whine to us as opposed to whining to your friends is because your friends get tired of it. Your friends don't want to hear it. They'll listen to you maybe the first time. But if I come to them and I tell them I'm having issues with my boyfriend, they say, hey, honey, we have, I have this great friend over here. Come meet him. Well, no, no, hold on. That's not what I was getting at. I really just want to talk about it. Well, I need a jerk. Forget him. And you can't, if you're going to go talk to, you know, there's just certain subjects that you don't want to get back around in your social circle. Let's say you do end up sharing something extremely personal with a, a very close friend, and then you have a falling out. Now they have something that could potentially come back to bite you, either on Facebook or just through, uh, just through chat. Providing confidentiality. Yes, we would provide a confidentiality agreement. Um, it would be signed at, between every session um, with our listener and with our client. Clients don't have to see the same listener. Once we had the pre with, once we had the facility up running, my hope would be to have maybe five to seven listeners with maybe their picture on some board. And if a client walked in and well today I want to talk to that person because I like the way they look, but. Tomorrow I'm going to talk to this person because I don't I don't want I want to keep that uh, anonymous kind of feeling. I just don't want to risk anything kind of coming back around. It's like when you touch it. Right. <laughs> Minus the religion, if anything. Would you be judgmental. Able to do it, uh, run the operation without the facility and do it all. Uh, I did think about that, but I think a lot of it is I want to keep the feeling of kind of. You're, you're going out of your normal environments. Um, I wouldn't be opposed in the beginning to meet people at other public uh, avenues like coffee shops, um, other casual places like, a, a, I don't know, like a, a library or somewhere quiet where you can be kind of intimately sit down and you know talk about things. But I really feel like for the company as a whole to kind of grow, if I was to open additional locations, I would want to have this, you know, the kind of storefront feel to it. So if I picked my listener, I could kind of go off in my in a room that would have maybe two couches and just kind of sit down and chat and have a peer to have a free cup of coffee, tell me what's on your mind. You know, for the hour, they just listen. Thank you very much.